Myanmar, or by its own name, Burma, is located in the west of Southeast Asia. It's a fascinating country that people have actually started to take an interest in. Well, mostly because of the bad stuff that has happened there, the military coup specifically, but there's more to it than that. So let's learn a bit more about it with these 10 subjects. The video is a bit long, sorry about that. I actually wanted to make two parts, but it's easier to watch this way, so one part it is. Please bear with me as we continue with number one. The supernatural is taken seriously in Myanmar, maybe more than in any other country. As much as it is devout Buddhist, Myanmar is also animist, which means that they have customs derived from the folk religion, still practiced and spread all over the country. Basically, they believe in all kinds of spirits, have a type of shaman and a lot of superstitions. These spirits, or not, can be good or bad and serve various roles such as tree spirits, lake spirits, and so on. Many Burmese believe in the existence of household spirits, and this has given rise to sayings such as if you don't get up early, you will disappoint the guardian spirit of the house, which can be useful, especially for children or uh, if you like to sleep in, like me. Other beliefs, however, don't have explanations even remotely as logical. For example, Pregnant women are not allowed to eat bananas because the babies will get big and don't clip your nails at night because you'll anger the ghosts. Also, don't wash your hair a week after a funeral in the neighborhood because just don't. You, you just don't. My favorite is that if you are a man, it is said that the panties of a woman can drain your power, and you should absolutely avoid them. What, you don't think this is serious? Well, in 2007, a group of activists launched a global campaign called, and I kid you not, Panties for Peace. Basically, supporters were encouraged to send women's underwear to Burmese embassies in order to attack and weaken the abusive military regime. The international community was like, what is going on here? But the generals might have believed it. That's because members of the Burmese military are notorious for believing in superstitions. And also for practicing Yadaya, a kind of magic that consists of performing various actions in order to increase fortune. Beware though, it can get pretty expensive. For example, Myanmar's first prime minister ordered the construction of 60,000 pagodas in order to ward off evil. That was probably not cheap. Even the location of the capital was supposedly decided using astrology. And its placement is definitely weird, let me tell you that. Surrounded by rice paddies and at a distance of 320 kilometers from the old capital and other important country locations, Naipido is considered by many the weirdest capital in the world. And that's because it's basically empty. There's absolutely no one here except government officials and people that service government officials. And it doesn't exactly accommodate to the common man either, with prices way higher than in the other big cities. So people are not exactly lining up to move here. Officially, it has a population of about 1 million, but in practice, it's more like a ghost town. Or not town, am I right? Ha ha ha, no. Nothing shows this better than that famous highway with 20 lanes on which there are no cars. That chicken can just cross the road and no one will ever make jokes about it. Other theories state that it was placed here because it's easier to hide during an attack or revolution, and it was also built in secret and unveiled 10 years after the project started, which, when you think about it, really supports this hideout theory. Bad roads, lots of traffic, and cramped spaces make driving in Myanmar 
less than ideal. Not to mention that there are a lot of unpaved roads, you know, with the jungle and all. And I'm not counting the empty capital, because that's not where most people live. Most people live in Yangon, where taking your brand new BMW would not be the best choice. And besides the roads that are not in a great condition, there's also the fact that they switched from driving on the left to driving on the right side 50 years ago. This happened simply overnight and came at the order of General Nguyen, supposedly on advice by his wife's astrologer. Told you it's important. The problem is Myanmar had a lot of trade sanctions. You know, the usual human rights abuses, wrecking of democracy and all. So they could not import from most countries. And the obvious choice to buy cars from was Japan, which makes awesome, cheap and also reliable cars. But for driving on the left, so now, 50 years after switching to the right, most cars in Myanmar actually have the wheel on the wrong side. Now, for those of you that don't know, having the wheel in the right location is very important to visibility when driving. It's harder to see incoming traffic when turning a corner. Now, combine this with the most common type of traffic in Asia, which is basically lots of it, and a lack of respect for driving rules, and you get Myanmar's biggest city, Yangon. The added stress and attention drain also makes drivers pretty much disregard pedestrians in general. So even if you are crossing legally, you might want to be careful of cars. Luckily, the import of cars with a wheel on the right was finally banned in 2017. So the roads, shall we say, are on the road to recovery. So you might know that Myanmar is the second largest opium producer in the world. No, you didn't. In that case, welcome to the Golden Triangle, where poppies grow like grass in Jamaica. I'm joking, it's gotten better in recent years, but only because Southeast Asians have been watching Breaking Bad and came up with more profitable ideas. But there is a legal substance that you probably didn't know about, and that goes ignored by most of the Western world simply because it's not really used there. It's actually one of the most popular drugs on the planet, especially in the southern and southeastern regions of Asia. Betelnut is kind of like tobacco, only more addictive and dangerous, but many Asian countries have a friendly history with it. And out of them, Myanmar stands out as being the biggest consumer and producer if you take into account population since close competitors have at least double the citizens. And then there's India, which supplies half of the world market. But let's move past that. According to the WHO, 51% of men and 16% of women in Myanmar are regular consumers of the drug. And not surprisingly, the government has tried to stop this with awareness campaigns and has banned the use of betel nut in state buildings. But Myanmaris are simply not giving up often stating that they just don't believe in the risks. And that's that. For a first-time visitor, it might seem like Myanmar uses a more complicated version of the US measurement system. Only three countries still use the imperial units in most of their measurements. The US, Liberia, and Myanmar. Here you will find the almost extinct species of gallons, acres, and yards. Weight might be a problem for US citizens though, as it is measured in traditional Burmese units like peta, muta, and kiata. But Myanmar also uses the metric system, so if you visit, you'll have to keep up with three different types of units, including the traditional one, or just use a converter up, but come on, go hardcore. Most locals actually know multiple systems because they are taught this in school and everyone uses the units they are most familiar with. But there's still the problem of efficiency. It's not like it's wasting the time of every single citizen in the country. Right, America? Did you know that at one point, Myanmar actually ran out of Burmese cats? Yes, I know, weird, but it somehow happened. And we almost lost a wonderfully distinct type of cat. And man, what a loss it would have been. 
You see, this cat is not like other cats. It kind of behaves like a puppy. You for me right? It acts like a puppy. Meaning that it is friendly like a puppy. A cat. They love people, they are very trusting of strangers and remain playful even as adults. And you might want to sit down for this one. There have been numerous cases of Burmese cats learning games such as fetch and tag. How is that even a cat? The Burmese and other ethnicities in Myanmar don't actually dig coffee that much. Even alcohol isn't as popular as in other countries. I mean, they're lost, right? Instead, the undisputed national drink here is tea, with tea houses being the main place for people to hang out and socialize, and take drugs, beaten lot, I mean, no illegal stuff. The favorite here is black tea with condensed milk, but tea houses don't just sell tea, they sell all kinds of snacks and meals as well. In this way, they resemble the pubs of western countries, and they had the same historical role as well. Here, the people used to discuss all kinds of topics, ranging from politics, to art, to who the king slept with, and, of course, how to organize protests. The traditional tea house is not fancy at all. Imagine a cramped space with small tables, plastic chairs, and a lot of noise. I know when I say tea house, a quiet space comes to mind, but these are really not. There are fancy ones as well, of course, but the difference in price keeps a lot of people away from them. The middle ground and the best choice for tourists is probably tea house chains. Yes, there are tea house chains as well. Give this a go on your first visit. There are 135 different ethnic groups in Myanmar. Of course, the Bamar or Burma people make up the majority of the population, at about 68%. But the rest of the country is filled with interesting people groups and even more interesting cultural practices. From Burmese Indians to Chinese Muslims, Myanmar really does have quite an array of cultural differences. Perhaps the most famous are the people of the Kayanlawi tribe, where women wear brass coils around their necks in an attempt to lengthen it. You've probably seen them in a top with the stripe list or something like that. They are so famous that they are actually bothered by tourists now. There are also people groups that have revolutionized the way we do some things. Have you heard about Lotus Silk? It is one of the most expensive and luxurious fabrics in the world, with one cardigan costing about $6,000. It was invented by an Ita woman, who first offered it to Buddhist temples. The practice has continued for centuries in Myanmar, but many have recently realized its value and it was picked up by neighboring countries as well. There's also the Rohingya group, sometimes called the most discriminated against peoples in the world. But that issue is too complicated to be included in this video. Tell me in the comments if you want to know more about such issues. Common to all these ending groups though is a relaxed and even stoic attitude focused more on spirituality. Locals don't usually react to problems and exhibit impressive amounts of patience. But be careful because this patience is also expected of tourists, who sometimes like to make a scene. Before knowing anything about it, I didn't think Myanmar had such distinct cultural features. Like sure, it's a Southeast Asian country most people don't know anything about, but it is surprisingly different. From tea houses to smoking something called chirots or green cigars, to people carrying stuff on their heads. And then there's also Tanaka, one of the most iconic things about the country. It is a kind of face paint made from tree bark that protects against sunburn, gives a cooling sensation in summer, and is said to even remove acne. But my favorite is the longi. Everybody compliments the Scottish for their badass skirt wearing men, right? They don't? What are you talking about? Of course they do. But can you wear a kilt to the office? Do you see businessmen or government workers wearing skirts? No you don't. Well, in Myanmar you do, wearing longi, 
a traditional piece of clothing. Both men and women wore basically all the time. And while not technically a skirt, it looks like one, so it counts. It also looks cool, can have creative designs, and can be used in a variety of ways. It can be used as a strap for carrying things, as pants, and even as an umbrella. Like, what is this versatility? So, you might have heard that there was a coup in Myanmar at the start of 2021. But this is nothing new. There was a takeover in 1962, a few years after independence, and another one in 1988. What is new this time is that since 2011, 63 years after its independence, Myanmar finally made a lot of progress towards democracy. And it all went down the drain. As you can imagine, this will not only affect the former Burma, but other countries in the region as well. The overall fight for democracy has suffered a setback, and different problems like drug trafficking, chaos, and poverty have already increased, especially poverty. With so many international businesses being angry with the new government, foreign investment has dropped by 22%, which is a lot for a country that was already struggling. The challenge now is how to support the poor people in Myanmar without supporting the military. Most of the public though, even the international one, is united against the coup. People refuse to support companies aligned with the military, protesting cosplay and other weird clothes, bang their pots on the streets and do all kinds of crazy stuff to get the attention of the international media. There were even fundraisers by rebel armies hidden in neighboring countries. But let's hope that the violence will stop and everyone can get back to their daily lives without the fear of an autocratic government. If Myanmaris would have unrestricted internet, I'm sure they like and subscribe. But I'm not sure they do, so you can do it for them. These are the first in a series of many videos about Southeast Asia. But the channel will cover many other interesting topics about countries and society. Until next time, drink water and don't clip your nails at night.